The water resources sector is dynamic in Nigeria. The Federal Ministry of Water Resources is the highest policy-making organ of government for this sector, especially through the National Council of Water Resources, which holds yearly. Having been created in 1976, the vision and mission were set for the work of providing policy guidelines and national projects to enhance water resources services for Nigerians. With the appointments of the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Engineer Sleiman Hosseini Adamu, in the year 2015, he set about reinvigorating and revitalizing the sector to enable it to deliver extensively on its mandate and refocus the ministry towards ensuring that the country meets the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals by the year 2030. A water resources roadmap was instituted by the Honorable Minister to guide the process of revitalizing the ministry. A major component of the reform process started with the development of a blueprint. Then, with blueprint came the framework for repositioning, professionalization by the appointment of new professional management teams, restoration of the agricultural extension services, and revitalizing the river basin authorities, which were established to boost agricultural production in the country through all year round farming, to guarantee Nigeria's food security and achieve integrated rural development. Upper Bedu is another very important river basin, uh, headquartered in Yola, and uh, we're working very closely with them. There is a huge amount of land that is available for farming and uh, thousands of hectares have been leased out by the uh, Upper Bay River Basin Development Authority to commercial farmers. Uh, we're beginning to see them investing and uh, develop. Every day we are getting a lot of interest uh, for those farmlands. Besides, uh, it's another is one river basin where we're also working on hydropower. Uh, we just completed the uh, Dadinkoa hydropower project, which was uh, a, a, which is a concession uh, uh, to supply 40 megawatts of electricity. Uh, we're tidying up the, I think the, the concessionaire is tidying up the process of uh, uh, getting the power license and uh, being able to, to, to sell. But right now, he's generating power on a test run and is feeding uh, electricity into the national grid. Um, and there are lots of other potentials in, the, in Taraba. Uh, and as you well know, uh, Upper Niger River, Upper Benue River Basin Development Authority was the one that initiated the Mobila Hydropower Project more than 40 years ago. So uh, it's another very, very important uh, river basin for us, one of the largest. The Upper Benue River Basin Development Authority with its administrative headquarters in Yula, Adamawa State, is one of the 12 river basins established under Decree No. 25 of 1976, as amended by Decree 35 of 1987. The authority's operational area is located in northeastern Nigeria, which constitute Adamawa Central and Southern Senatorial Districts, Bauchi South Senatorial District, the whole of Gombe and Taraba states. Upper Bini River Basin Development Authority was established over 40 years ago, January 1976, Decree Number 35. Uh, the concept of the River Basin Development Authority is to harness both surface and groundwater potentials of the country. There are 12 river basin authorities, and their establishment was purely based on geographical boundaries rather than geopolitical boundaries for the purpose of exploration, exploitation, conservation in a sustainable manner, the overall potentials of the Benue Basin. The authority has well-trained personnel from the headquarters area offices and project sites with national and international reputation 
who have been involved in project conceptualization studies and design and implementation of WB Trimming Irrigation UNEDO ICSHP USAID sponsored studies and design of hydropower projects. Numa Bethymetric Survey of Benue River and the National Water Resources Master Plan. The Managing Director of Upper Benue River Basin Development Authority, a seasoned engineer and consummate administrator. He speaks further on the significant milestones of his agency. We have drilled uh, over 500 homes across nine senatorial districts that are within the Upper Benue Basin. And I have never certified a solar borehole or a hand home or borehole that has not been completed to satisfaction whereby the villagers I see them physically fetching water. Same thing with dams, small ass dams that like medium because there isn't enough money for us to build large dams that were built in the 80s. So we now focus on small ass dams which if we have enough money, they can be completed within one or two calendar years. And it will harness enough water to release it for irrigation. It can be used for fisheries. And it can also be used for the livestock. Power generation has been completed since December 2019, tested. Presently, it is operating. Uh, the process of power purchasing agreement is still ongoing between the concessionary entity and the uh, Nigerian bulk electricity trader. Any moment they complete their power purchasing agreement, revenue will come into the government uh, treasury and the river basin will be able to sustain the facility based on the income. Also, we build drainages in the urban centers to regulate uh, urban flood control. This one, nobody will pay you. If you construct a drainage in a city or in a local government quarters, you are safeguarding their structures from collapsing and you are safeguarding life and property. So the economic benefit of the flood and erosion control is to safeguard life and property, which if the structure has not been provided, uh, there will be loss of life and property. So non-revenue comes from flood control, but safeguarding life and property of the community within this uh, facility. The Upper Benue River Basin Development Authority constructed that in Kowa multi-purpose dam and irrigation in Gombe State to provide the services to irrigate 44,000 hectares to generate 40 megawatts of electricity to produce 20,000 tons of fish annually to provide raw water to Gombe regional water supply to provide navigation to serve as flood control other milestones include 1.77 bm cubic storage capacity dam constructed and commissioned Powerhouse for the 40 megawatt hydroelectric power constructed. 40 megawatt hydroelectric power completed ready for commissioning. 5.5 kilometers length main canal constructed and it is expected to reach 7.5 kilometer to irrigate phase one scheme. 2,000 hectares of land for irrigation by gravity under construction by World Bank trimming projects. 40 hectares pilot irrigation scheme established with two numbers solar powered irrigation pumps at Garin Rafi. About 1,050 farming families gainfully employed. Over 470 tons of grains equivalent produced annually. 4,118 hectares are being cultivated under minor irrigation scheme at Dadinkowa Dam drawback area with about 28,000. 826 tons of grains equivalent produced annually. 200 hectares been cultivated on rain fade. Kiri Dam and irrigation at Amawa State. 
dam constructed in 1982 for irrigation of 12,000 hectares, Savannah Sugar Company. Achievements A number of earth dams have been constructed. 615 cubic millimeters storage capacity. Main canal, 13.5 kilometers length constructed. 6.0 kilometers length canal lined. 7.5 kilometers length on lined canal maintained annually. 6,000 hectares savannah sugar plantation provided with irrigation water. About 150,000 tons of sugar cane produced annually. Over 120,000 jobs created. Fishing development enhanced. About 12,000 tons of fish harvested by local fishermen annually. Adam House State, in partnership with American firm, to produce 15 megawatt electricity. There was never a single day since 1982 that the sugar company has ever complained of lack of water for irrigation from Kiri Dam. And this is the only project that is commercially being operated by the river basin. The Dadinkowa Dam, since 2007, the river basin has been providing raw water to the state government. We have a treatment plant at Dadinkowa. They process the water and pump it to the town and the surrounding villages. Though we have challenges of collecting our IGR from the states. Wire Dam and Irrigation, Bauchi State. Here, the dam was constructed for irrigation, fisheries development, as well as augmentation of water supply to Bauchi Metropolis. Achievements Dam completed 37 cubic millimeters storage capacity, small hydropower component 150 kilowatts installed in collaboration with UNEDO with three communities benefiting. 45 hectares pilot irrigation scheme developed. 309 tons of grains equivalent produced annually. 151 farming families gainfully employed. About 675 jobs created. Yula Irrigation, Lake Gyeyo, Project Adamaw State. Designed to irrigate 1,200 hectares at Lake Gyeyo near Jimeta Metropolis. Achievements. 286 hectares fully under irrigation, 233 hectares being cultivated under rain-fed agriculture, over 924 tons of grains equivalent produced annually, over 496 farming families skinfully employed, about 1,980 jobs created. Kaltungo F. Dam, Gombe State, dam constructed for water supply and flood control, Achievements 21 cubic millimeters storage capacity dam completed in 2015. Water supply components under construction. Flood control. Lower Taraba Irrigation, Taraba State. Designed to irrigate 38,000 hectares around Gasol and Mutumbu in Taraba State. By construction of a barrage at Tela and 35 kilometer length conveyance canal. Achievements 9 kilometers length of protection bond constructed, over 3,000 hectares cleared, 250 hectares developed for irrigation currently under rain fed, 10 hectares of orchard established, over 11,550 ha of land allocated to commercial farmers by Honorable Minister Federal Minister of Water Resources. Over 31,000 tons of grains equivalent produced annually. Establishment of Songhai Model Farm. The authority adopted the concept of an integrated agricultural practice, the Songhai Model. So far, the authority has established Songhai Model Farm at Talum Adamawa, Ruansanyi, Gombe, Waya, Bauchi, and Gaso Taraba states. The scheme is designed to increase food security, animal husbandry, fisheries, and empowerment of graduate youth riding on the Songhai farming model 
whereby the graduate youths within the authorities' area of jurisdiction are trained in various agricultural activities. Right now, under the Trimin project, uh, working with the river basin, we have built 2,000 hectares of irrigation infrastructure in the, in the Dadinkoa uh, dam area. Um, uh, of course, we are, we've been working on Chochi project, we're trying to revitalize it, that is in Yola. Um, and there is a, another huge potential, we're working on Donga uh, drainage system, and uh, we're also soon going to uh, start a 6,000 hectare irrigation scheme in Donga Sunte, also to be, to be managed uh, or coordinated by the Upper, Upper Benue River Basin Development Authority. Then we just completed a study. There is a potential for 30,000 hectares of irrigation in Guyuk. Uh, some designs have been done, and uh, hopefully in the future, we'll be able to, uh, to implement those projects. Achievements. Talum Adamawa State. 12 hectares of land developed at Talum. Six numbers F pond rehabilitated at Talum. Solar irrigation pumps constructed. Intake canal desilted, 12 UPVC pipes laid, M and W pumps overhaul, wire bouchy stayed, 5 hectares orchard developed, 10 numbers fish pond constructed, Ruansanyi Gombe stayed, 6 hectares orchard developed, 300 meter canal constructed, project vehicle provided. Gasol, Taraba State, Poultry House constructed, Fish Ponds constructed, 5 hectares of land developed, Handy Lining of 7.5 km Lens Dam, Main Canal at Kiri 20% completion. The basin has extensive potentials for future development and they include but not limited to these such as Apart from Benue River, which is one of the two major rivers in the country, the authority's operational area is drained by eight rivers, namely Mayo, Ine, Mayo Belwa, Kilange, Taraba, Donga, and Suntai on the southern bank, and Pai and Gongula on the northern bank. Feasibility studies carried out revealed that within the operational area of this authority, water resources potential exist to the tune of 55.5 billion cubic meters. To harness these potentials, a dam is required at each of the following locations. Dasin Hausa, Mayo Inne, Kilange, Dindima, Bagel, Gembu, Suntai, and Baragi Atela. The authority has extensively demonstrated the capacity and commitment in keying into the change mantra of the present administration of economic diversification with emphasis on all year round farming. Consequently, has provided a lot of mileage in contributing to Mr. President's agenda of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. Since the inception of President Muhammad Buhari's administration in 2015, agriculture was given the priority for diversification of the economy. And that was why he banned the importation of rice and sugar. And he introduced a program of anchor borrowers, whereby small scale farmers can obtain services, not actually in real money, but in terms of agri inputs and support from government, federal government agencies. The central bank will make the money available, and there is a Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria refund, and then the word anchor borrowers. It means a cluster of farmers in a community can form a cooperative association whereby services can be provided, particularly where the river basin is involved is the dry season farming. 
uh, in 2020-2021, that means from November 2020 up to June 2021, uh, we registered over 15,000 farmers along the Darden Quarry Reservoir and then followed up to the uh, middle of Gongola River in Tubauchi State. Because of the success of that program, the CBN uh, DMO office in Gombe and Unity Bank of Nigeria with Rice Farmers Association who are providing the input. While the river basin provided the land and provided water. Where the reservoir did not reach, the farmers were provided with water pumps and tube wells or wash bowls. So each farmer benefited from five bags of fertilizer per hectare, one bag of seeds, a hybrid variety of rice, and also a set of irrigation pump so that they can pump water from the lake into their farm. And we did it in such a way that every farmer should have at least one hectare of rice.